Okay, the first thing I did was open up this image here. I duplicated the layer and I blurred it. And then from there, I right clicked on it, I added a layer mask and I created a black to white gradient along the bottom edge. And this basically creates a false uh, focal blur to make it look like as you get further away from the image, um, it's blurry. And that will help us make this look a little more realistic whenever we're focusing on our subject. So from there, I open up Raw Therapy and I edit this picture and I adjust the colors and the tones until it looks like something I'm happy with. From there, I export that out as a JPEG and I open it up in GIMP. I take that file and I will start tracing the outside edge and uh, a couple of the inside edges with the pads tool to be able to create this selection to import this into the final image that we're going to be making uh, with the background image that we started on earlier. So you'll see here I am tracing along the outside and then in addition I will also trace the inside of the arms but on both sides and I'm going to turn that into a selection and add that to a layer mask to mask all those details off. From there I'm going to zoom in to the bottom of the corset, take the brush tool and brush out all of those little holes in the inside. And then with that layer I'm going to I'm going to take that layer and I'm going to insert it into my final image, place it where I want to place it, and then open up this picture of this guy right here, download him, put him into the actual image after we add the layer mask. So we're going to create a new layer as a grayscale, and we're going to adjust the levels and uh, paint the inside of that layer mask, tr or of the layer, trying to create a new layer mask from this. So we're going to paint all of these details in, and uh, the reason why we're doing this is because it creates a really nice effect on the hair. It makes it look really nice and realistic. And then from there, we're going to try to adjust the end of the shoe, and we're going to try to adjust the bottom using the layers. Uh, that didn't work for me, so instead of doing that, I ended up changing my strategy and just made it to where I used the pads tool along the bottom edge and the top left edge of his body uh, to create the, the rest of the layer mask. But I still used the details that I got earlier um, from the color adjustments for the hair. And you'll see here, I'm going to turn this into a layer mask and I'm going to be really happy with the result. But you'll see that even with the final result, there's still a little bit of um, white along the top of the hair. So I select that, I add the layer mask and I modify it a little bit further to uh, further adjust that mask. I then move him into the image and I download this picture of this barrel. I also import that into the image and uh, from there we're going to scale down that barrel to where it fits into the image and it looks proper and uh, once we're done scaling the barrel we're going to repeat that process and scale down the person as well. So we're going to scale him down and you'll see I made the layer a little bit transparent so that I can see how big he is and where he's positioned. From there I'm going to go ahead and blur both the person and the barrel to make them look like they're a little bit out of focus and make it look a little more real. Once we're done with that, I'm going to duplicate the layer of the person, and let's let it catch up here. Okay, I'm going to duplicate the layer of the person and uh, make it all black, move that over a little bit, and we're going to create a shadow here. So we're going to go ahead and start using the brush tool to brush out to make it look like it's faded, and then set that layer mode to overlay and adjust it down um, with some opacity to make it look realistic. From there, I'm going to repeat that same exact process with the barrel. Duplicate the layer, rotate the image of the barrel that I duplicated, uh, use the transform tool to transform it to the shape I want, and then set it to overlay, turn the opacity down, use the brush tool to blur all of those details to make it look like a realistic shadow. Next up, we're going to go ahead and take a picture of rust here and use it to create a look of burn on the person's skin. So we're going to download that image and then insert it in as a layer, move it up on top of her arm, set the layer mode to burn, and then add a layer mask and mask off a lot of this extra stuff that we don't really want. Uh, first we went ahead and adjusted the colors, but after that we uh, then started masking off the details to create this really disgusting looking scabby burn kind of scar on the woman's arm. And then after that we go ahead and continue to make adjustments um, we're going to darken the arms a little bit by creating a new layer, setting it to layer mode overlay, fill it in with the color black, and then mask off everything except for her arms to make them look darker. And then we're going to go ahead and create a, uh, another new layer. Oh, I'm sorry, we went ahead and adjusted the opacity back and then masked off the rest of that rust uh, to make it look a little more realistic. Next up, we're going to create a new layer, fill it in with a pattern, add a layer mask, and use a special brush uh, to mask off to create 
the sense of dirt and mud and crap all over her. Set that layer mode to burn and adjust the opacity down. Download this image right here of this woman's arm, and we're going to click on the pads tool and we're going to trace the outline of this of this uh, bandage and uh, use it as a layer mask. Let's insert that in as a new layer, rotate it around, and scale it to fit properly on the woman's arm. And then uh, next up, we're going to go ahead and add some dirt to this guy here but using the same process we did for the dirt on her. So we're going to first add a new layer mode, set the overlay, fill it in with the color black, use a splattery brush, and then uh, create that detail and then blur it afterward. Next up, we're going to go ahead and continue to add another set of dirt on top of the regular dirt using a different color, setting it to black, filling it in with overlay, uh, adjusting the opacity, and masking it off as we see fit. Once we're done doing that, we're going to go ahead and uh, just continue to kind of tweak all of the details, organize them all into layer modes, and uh, create a new layer, set it to the layer mode color, fill it in with the sepia tone, and then adjust the opacity back to something that we like. After doing that, we're just going to continue to add a little bit more dirt using the same process as before, set a new layer, set it to overlay, uh, fill it in with black, and mask off using a special brush. Uh, once all that's done, we're going to add a vignette by creating gradients on uh, the edges that we choose uh, by making a new layer, setting it to the layer mode overlay, and gradient black. That sums it up. For the complete set of source files and all of the other information for this tutorial, click on the link here. This will provide you with all the information uh, that you need to be able to create your own version of this. And there's also the full length version of this if you want to watch that instead of um, this brief five minute version. Thanks.